more of a question for you now that's uh, going to re require you to put on your prophetic hat. <laughs> um, in 25 years or so uh -huh. down the road, how will Bible college and seminaries look different than they do today? Uh, I think they will continue to be products of and catalysts for spiritual movements. Um, so um, they will continue to have that in terms of the ends for which they exist, but they'll be quite different in terms of the means. Um, I think, for example, it's going to be hard for biblical higher education institutions not to be involved at some level in multimodality education. In other words, not just campus-based residential education exclusively, but giving students access to the education that they offer uh, in different modes without, without diluting their convictions about uh, community and those kind of things. That's going to be a challenge, but I think they're probably going to have to have more delivery modes. Um, I think they're probably uh, going to enroll more non-traditional age students than has been the case. And I think it's entirely possible, particularly if what is possibly happening in our culture that's going to shut down a lot of Christian nonprofits. Uh, I think there may be stronger church connections where uh, the school is actually operated by a church or it's, a, it's, it's, part, it's integral to the ministry of a church and so on because uh, the constitutional protections are going to increase the more closely the ministry is tied to the work of the local church. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's even some changes in corporate structure in terms of self-identification, those kind of things. Um, that's just a few things sure. that come to mind. Okay. Well, thinking about that, from uh, the pace of change, you mm -hmm. know, we've seen the pace of change in society uh, get faster and faster and faster to the point where things that we would have thought unthinkable mm -hmm. even two years ago are mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. reality. Given that historically change in higher education occurs very slowly and mm -hmm. very gradually, can accreditation commissions adjust to the need <laughs> for greater speed in engaging in change? That is the $64,000 question, Tim. Uh, to the extent that I have anything to do with ABHE, we're going to try to meet that challenge. Uh, my new colleague, Steve Moore, uh, I think he's quoting somebody else, but he likes to say that <clears throat> adaptability is the new meta competency for a leader. And um, I don't think ABHE can be, has any right to be a leader in biblical higher education if we don't uh, learn how to be adaptable. And uh, in our core values, we have one of our core values is innovation bias. So now we have to see how we can systematize that and embed that value in our culture. And <clears throat> uh, most people would say that values are strengthened by, a f by seeing somebody behaving that way and affirming it more than by correcting people for not doing it. So I think what we need to do is we need to hold up innovative models to celebrate them, to, to uh, help them become visible uh, rather than to um, sanction innovation. Uh, that seems to me to be a strategy that we're going to have to adopt if um, we're going to be keeping pace with the rate of change that we're confronting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. One last question. If someone were dreaming and praying about starting an institution of theological higher learning, what advice would you give them? Well, I think the first advice I would give is go for it. Um, if the Lord is prompting you to do that, uh, you're aspiring to a very worthy calling. Um, 
I think that biblical and theological education is integral to the life of the church, and it is one of the marks of a vital church and a vital church movement. So uh, if, if, what is, uh, if the impetus for your desire to start a biblical or theological institution comes out of the gospel impetus, if I can put it that way, then I would say go for it. Having said that, I think the second thing I would say is uh, find out if somebody else is doing what you're interested in doing and see if there's a way to collaborate or at least to learn from them. Um, you don't have to, you know, invent things from the ground up. You can learn from other people. And it may be that there's some real um, gains to be had in terms of collaboration. But my basic message would be go for it. Uh, God loves to build and grow things. Let a thousand flowers bloom. Um, and let's see what the Lord's going to do to proliferate his work around the world. The best Bible college that ever existed probably hasn't been invented yet. Amen to that. Well, thank you so much, Ralph, for uh, joining us today. And uh, may God bless you in your work. And may he do exactly what you suggested, that uh, the Bible college and seminary movement would proliferate in the years to come, right. no matter where the culture goes. And may Bethlehem College and Seminary be at the forefront of that, right? Thank you. Thank you. Amen.